became a star. It was television that did that. She was in eight years of movies before people said Mitzi and didn't have to ask Mitzi who. I mean, she worked her way up. When I was under contract to studios, I was the perfect studio employee. She was able to do all the things Betty Grable could do and Alice Faye and all of these people, but she was always kind of a second banana to everyone. They did not know what to do with Mitzi Gaynor. One time I was doing three pictures at the same time. I absolutely loved it. I never said, well, they can't force me. I was so, I'm an actress. I mean, I want to work. South Pacific is the big one that everybody remembers Mitzi for. That movie rings true to everybody who ever loved a musical and who loved Rodgers and Hammerstein. I had such a thrill. Everybody announced themselves, you know, Elizabeth Taylor was going to do it, Doris Day was going to do it. And then when I was announced, everybody said, well, she's going to do Liat because, you know, she's always TNA and feathers. I mean, she can't possibly play Nellie Forbush. Producer Buddy Adler and director Josh Logan watch lovely Mitzi Gaynor having her hair cropped for the part of Pert Nellie Forbush. She wanted the coveted role badly and studied hard for it. And like the island, she too undergoes a change. When you see her in South Pacific, you see a really good, serious actress at work and take your heart out. They meaning to call you, Emil? You have asked for a transfer. Why? What does it mean, Nellie? In the original play and the movie and now our production, the, the moment that is the, the climax of the show is the moment that Nellie Forbush faces her prejudice. I, I can't marry you. Because of my children. Oh, not because of your children. They're sweet. She's their Polynesian mother then. Their mother and I. It's not an easy moment to play. Mitzi Gaynor and Mary Martin and, and I, as well as hundreds of women who have played Nellie Forbush, have all gone through a process of having to face certain things in ourselves that maybe everyone should try to do once in a while. It's a, it's a valuable thing. This is something that's born in me. It is not. I do not believe this is born in you. Well, then why? Why do I feel the way I do? We wouldn't be sitting here if I hadn't done South Pacific. That's what it meant to my career. It was the begin, the be all, end all. It was more people remember me from that from than from anything else. I of course expected to win Academy Awards, and they would re write new plays for me and new films, and I would be, and it kind of didn't happen. I was offered to do a picture with Yul Brynner and Noel Coward in Greece called Surprise Package and it was a great experience. And then that was kind of it. 1961, a man by the name of Morris Landsberg came to see me and he had an idea that maybe I should do a show and appear in Las Vegas. <gasps> Las Vegas? Hmm. Mitzi Gaynor gonna do a nightclub act? I don't know how to do a nightclub act. I put all of my energy into it. Bob Sidney did the choreography. And he was marvelous. It had a lot of comedy in it. It had Brazilian music. It had a lot of glamour. When we did the act with Mitzi, she was the biggest act going. You know, everybody wanted to see her. It was an event, you know. It really was an event. They said, wow, she can sing and dance and talk. You know, there, there's like shock that, that, that a, a movie actress can do all those things. It was the first time that anybody had had a show like this. We were in Life magazine and Look magazine and Time magazine, and I think Life said, Mitzi Fractures Vegas. It was a, a, a step that I'm so grateful that I took. A lot of people who weren't aware of how versatile and how talented and how dynamic she was saw on the Academy Awards just how great she was. John Green, the famous MGM conductor, called me. And he said he wanted me to do the Academy Awards, he wanted me to do Georgie Girl. Georgie Girl? What's a Georgie Girl? And that this was the name of a song, Georgie Girl, which wasn't much of a song, but it was cute. And Mitzi came out dressed as a little schoolgirl, uh, kind of a little dress and a big Breton hat and glasses. 
and then of course it rips off. And here was this Bob Mackie, fabulous leotard with the fringe and so on and so forth. People went crazy. I think it holds the record of getting the longest ovation of any number that's ever been done on the Academy Awards. I love television all of a sudden because they kind of like me a little bit. That opened up a whole new venue for me. That's